Welcome to Relay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Relay Station. Shivers here. I did not and that, yeah. so is a special guest, Nitro Typat. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have a recurring guest this week. Um, say hello, Nomad. Oh, he's here. Hmm. Maybe powered off right I, now. I don't care much for that thing. All right. So we had a bit of an interesting week this week. Um, yeah, 312 and Evil Cotty. We had the IAE ending. Um, Star Citizen is bathing in cash. Uh, maybe potential leak of our new ship. Some details on the Perseus. What else do we have this week, Shiver? There was so much information. I couldn't possibly <laughs> tell you everything and get it right uh, if you yeah. don't know then i wouldn't know we got the spider-man gun we got the spider-man gun thank you nature mm -hmm. it's very important um oh, i'm sorry i'm, I'm sorry arachnid mail <laughs> all right so arachnid we're gonna person we're going to go directly to show and tell because there's some cool stuff to see this week um so we'll jump over there all right, we started off this week with the Perseus, the uh, basically arrowhead turned into a ship. I love it. Mm-hmm. I want one. You know how you know it's a good ship? Because David hates his ship with a passion. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, oh, okay, it's good. Like, I have absolutely no use for it myself. Oh, me neither. I want it. It's pretty, though. It's a great-looking worship. Mm -hmm. I'm still not sure whether or not I should upgrade my caterpillar to get one or not. Mm. One of the things I really like about it is it is a powerful, like, military-class ship, and it only requires, like, six people. Well, actually, it only yeah. requires four. The last two people are floaters who do whatever needs to be done in the ship. So, really, you only mm. need four people to run it. And, man, it's, it's got a... gravity generators. Hmm? It hasn't got any gravity generators. That may have just been an oversight. But yeah, you just have the the captain, the pilot, two gunners, and then yep. an engineer and a combat medic. And you're probably good. Yep, for sure. And those are like, those last two people, even though <laughs> you can have a turret gunner or uh, be a, a makeshift engineer too. Like, you only really need yeah. four. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, yeah, really love the look of this ship. Um, let's see here. I, I can actually pause now. Yay. Yay for technology. Um, I really, you can really see in this shot the arrowhead look and how they were inspired by, you know, actual arrowheads. Um, and, uh, I don't know where they got that idea from. I definitely, <laughs> definitely want to ram something with this ship. Really, yes. really bad. <laughs> There's a reason the bridge isn't on the front. That's right. And that reason is ramming. You go and you Come jam on, the front of like, the... <laughs> go ahead. I know everyone looked at it and it was like, that thing's so pointy, it's going to be for ramming. And am I the only, literally the only one who's just looked in and went, look at the size of those two guns on the front. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Living hell. I didn't think about that until... I was watching uh, the Thursday episode, and they were like, yeah, the the two size seven turrets. And yeah. I'm, like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you actually look at it, and the guns are almost the same length as the engines. So you know <laughs> you know, it's pretty serious freaking firepower. It, it's, it's obviously going to have its disadvantage, because when you've got these uh, two size seven guns blasting away how is this going to affect the other ship systems you know is this going to put too much of a strain on the power generators because it's only ha i say only it's hammerhead size so the generators that are on it are not going to be able to compensate that well if you're in the middle of a firefight you might have to make this uh decision of you know should i try and go in for the kill with these two size sevens or should i 
focus on trying to get my shields back up or my engines because mm-hmm. it's not yep. it's not the most maneuverable of ships either it, it the only real defense it's going to have is the potential armor and the shields on it and you're mm-hmm. going to have to you might be in this position where you have to make the tactical decision of do i go in for the kill or do i try and tank it a bit longer and wait mm-hmm. yeah for sure or do i ram the enemy ship See, today see, Shiv- to die. Shiver might recognize this maneuver, but I kind of want to just jam the front of the ship into some other ship and then open fire with those guns. I was thinking that too. <laughs> I'm so glad someone else mentioned it because I was thinking it. I'm like, man, those guns are really close to the front. And they'll probably end up inside the other ship. You can only do that if Councillor <laughs> Croy is at the helm. Oh, okay. Okay. Always miss Councillor Croy. All right, let's move on here. <laughs> oh, man. They're getting to have a pretty incredible lineup of big ships. <laughs> also, I love that shot. Oh, man. Just a second. Mm-hmm. I can actually rewind now. There we go. I love this shot where you're, like, sitting. You, you like, get in the turret seat, and there's all these huge shells sitting beside you that go <laughs> fucking turret. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that World War II. <laughs> look at the size of them. Up, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Totally. But, like, look at the size of those freaking shells. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> I mean, not just World War II, but also... Oh, man. I mean, don't don't tell me you don't look at the Perseus and immediately think of that stealth battleship that they have in the... Is it the U.S. military? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, stealth for sure, for sure. Battleship? Yeah. I mean, I, I a call... Battleship since... I call it a stealth battleship, but it's it looks like a stealth fighter that floats on water. That's a destroyer. Yep. <clears throat> that's yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. Destroyers like this, battleships, uh, you know. Yeah, they, yeah they're, that's they're the completely obsolete. The yeah, the the one you're talking about. I'm I'll actually show a picture of it. I'm, I know which one you're talking about. It's the was US... that the one that was made from the ruins of nine eleven towers. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. That sounds familiar. No. It looks like no. Oh. Um, but, uh, that's the Zumwalt class destroyer, and it looks, yeah, this is a stealth destroyer. Uh, now, is, is, the, is the Perseus considered a destroyer or a battleship? It is a gunship. Okay. Considered a heavy gunship. It's it's very it's in the similar class to um to the hammerhead but with a very different purpose. The hammerhead's d- mm-hmm. job is to rip through enemy fighters because it has all those yeah. smaller turrets. Um the uh the job of the Perseus is to destroy all of the subcapital class ships in a fleet. So everything so all of your constellations your um your pff, I don't know what the hell else would be in a fleet like that. Carrick? Carricks, if you have them in there. Um, merchantmen. Retaliators, merchantmen, yeah. Any anything that's not quite capital class, it's those big it, guns will just rip right through them. It could probably give a Perseus a run for its money because it has got uh torps as well. It is a it is a Perseus. Uh, you mean the Polaris? Polaris. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it could give Perseus a run for its money as well. I'm not wrong. You're not wrong in any way. But, but a battleship would be made to be an anti-capital, probably be made as an anti-capital mm-hmm. ship because it would have guns that are as, you know, probably as big as the Idris, almost mm-hmm. literally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It would be fucking huge. So mm-hmm. this is what Nitro is talking about. Um, this is the Zumwalt class destroyer. Yep. It's brand new. It's a stealth destroyer from the U.S. military. They have too much money. Mm. <laughs> They're just screwing around at this point. If I'm also correct, I'm pretty sure that that's one of the only ships uh, right now that's equipped with a mag cannon. Uh, they, I think this was the one where they were... It, there aren't any in service yet. They are experimenting. Right. Right. Um, but, but this was the ship that they were planning mm-hmm. to put the the railgun on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Railgun mag cannon. Same thing. 
uh, the biggest problem with the rail the rail gun, although you definitely it works, it just requires an enormous amount of power. Yeah. But you can I... you can punch a hole in pretty much anything, even over the horizon. Oh yeah. <laughs> I used to live, and I actually I actually went to a summer camp there, but I I lived about an hour away from the military base where they were developing the rail gun. Oh wow. And uh, did you ever have any just projectiles come through your house? <laughs> Explained. <laughs> no, but the scariest bit is that, of course, they would close it down during testing. Yep. But a road ran straight through the uh, the range that they tested it on. Oh wow! Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Across the road, and there'd be big scary signs. It's like uh, <laughs> test range. <laughs> If you drive down this road any further, you might have a mysterious hole in your car. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think I. I think mysterious hole is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> your car may cease to exist. <laughs> All right. So I'm moving on from our giant shells there. And yeah, this is what Chibber was talking about with the torpedoes. It does have some torpedoes, so they're nowhere near the size of something like a Polaris. <clears throat> any thoughts of the layout of the ship um i'd have to really study it they, mm -hmm. when they went over it um during the episode i didn't quite follow along very well um so i, I don't really think i can comment so on i, I really like this picture here because they're talking about how you know you have all of your uh have like your bridge up at the front here and it go, you can walk all the way back from the bridge and all the associated rooms, engineering and everything up here, all the way back to habitation, which is everything back here. Um, that inclu includes the quarters for all of the crew and the obviously the dining room and stuff there. Um, mm -hmm. That's all on one level. Now, I think <clears throat> there, there is an elevator that goes up to the bridge, correct? Um... Yes, I believe yeah. so. Yeah, there is. And then, and then, yeah, the this bridge, is the main bridge here. Yeah, and then the bridge is connected. They said to uh, escape pods and everything, right? Yeah. Are there escape the, pods? Like the escape on pods other are right back here. Um, I doubt it. Usually, there's only one area. Because that just means that everyone on the bridge is the only one. <laughs> Depends how long you have. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like, all right, elevator, come on. Come on, elevator, hurry up. And there's no yeah. stairs. I mean, I guess, you know. Maybe you could just open the, uh, you just put on a spacesuit and open the the cargo bay door at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Jump in the, jump in a tonk that you have in the fucking bay there and just ride it down to the planet. Yes. <laughs> I know you're joking, but you've just figured out how Drake <laughs> used their ejection systems. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You just aim, you make sure that the main cannon on the tonk is facing the ground, and you fire <laughs> it to, to create retro thrust. That's right. Uh, so now my favorite video of the week. And only the, there's only two videos this week. This is the other one. Uh, yeah. They're... Uh, they're getting tractor beams in the game. They're going to start with a handheld one, as you can see here. Yeah, I'm really excited to see... Because, like you said, this is just a handheld one. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see uh, what ships are going to be like. Yeah, I know there, there are several ships with uh, tractor beams... Um, Including uh, one that very, is very important is the one in the Caterpillar. Um, mm. They have a whole, like, tractor beam station for you to control it. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, Argo ship as well. And, of course, the first ship with the tractor beam, the 315P. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Doesn't uh, one of the... Oh, what's that ship called? The the Mako? The like the stingray shaped ship. The misc one. The what shaped ship? Stingray. 
Manta Ray. It's the Misk. Well, that's it's isn't the Maker the one? That's the no. Yeah, that's some variant of the Reliant. Yeah, Reliant. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, one of one of the the variants for the Reliant is said to have a tractor beam as well. If I'm remembering. That's correctly. pretty cool. So, what do you think of your uh, ability to Spider-Man grapple with the uh, in zero G? Um, they did. Let's exactly play that section hoping. again. They did exactly what I was hoping they would do, and they <clears throat> brought in kind of sort of the physics of uh, uh, that ship breaking game that I can't oh, yeah. remember the name of. Um, Shipbreakers. Hard oh, Space yes. Shipbreaker. Oh. Hard Space. That's the part I always forget. Mm -hmm. um, or think the. I mean, uh, they said that they were working on it, but they kind of showed off how they're like, yeah, really light objects will move around really easily and the, the tractor beam won't sway. But really heavy objects, it's going to sway back and mm -hmm. forth. But in the comparison, they both moved about the same. So, and I, I know that they're working on it, so one of the I'm things not going to give them too much black for one it. One of the things I really like about this is the ability to pass items back and forth between people. Mm -hmm. You could have, like, one guy in the cargo bay in your ship, and you could, like, fire the boxes at him when you're salvaging another ship. Like, here, take this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. I just <laughs> got this idea from watching those two pass the box back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, you get two uh, Drake Cutlasses. And you park them parallel to each other, about a football field's length apart. And you open the side door, and you can do like makeshift say the ball by taking a little <laughs> cargo container and trying to get it into the enemy team's cutlass. See, oh, that, that awesome. was going to be my thing. It was a bit of an elephant in the room of so say the ball. Cross fingers, right? Because this was the only thing that was really keeping us from getting say the ball. Well, right? and you know, that's you know, Lady Space legal. Patrol. <laughs> Space Patrol. <laughs> that that that's a name that brings connotations. Uh, <clears throat> has an interesting point. So we cannot move other players with tractor beam, but we can move objects. Can a player hold an object and then move that player? Almost certainly. That's my guess. I so, have a feeling that that's one of those unintentional features that they mm -hmm. talked about in the video that's very game-breaking, mm -hmm. but they're having fun playing with. It's going to happen. It's, when you build a systems-based game like they're trying to do, you end up with an enormous amount of unintended consequences. It, it, it's cool. I was just going to say you could slingshot stuff. If yep. the player doesn't move, but you grab onto the object and you turn and build up like strength in the tractor beam mm -hmm. and then the person just lets go of the object and you let go with the tractor beam at the right moment and it just flings it. Perfect. I mean, not, you could extend the same thing into space, into space combat. <laughs> like a Drake Caterpillar, you know, you, you need cover, you can just grab this <laughs> asteroid if you're really skilled and fast enough with a tractor beam, just bring it in. and. So you're taking potentially, that... Potentially, maybe... You're taking that that uh, you're taking that Riker quote like directly seriously, right? Yeah. Thank you for getting it. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, the, that's the thing <laughs> with uh, any sandbox game is you make these things and then you consider what the worst that could happen is, how it could potentially be used for trolling, and then you weigh up the consequences and think: Should we allow this in there? you know warts and all and see how it goes or should we not and that that's how you get the tools in a sandbox is you just make the system the players invent the methodology i suppose the techniques exactly exactly um so i wanted to there was a bit of an easter egg here in this in this shot and i wanted to show people um some folks noticed that the clouds have while they're not volumetric um, have seen a bit of an upgrade in this shot. Uh, this was obviously a preview of 312, um, and so I'll play it a little bit here. You can take a look at the clouds. You can see the shadows they're casting on the surface, and uh, they look a little better than they currently do in the game, which is pretty cool. 
play that again. And then, of course, we have the first thing that people did in the game being shown off with the tractor beam now. Moving the Big Benny's vending machine. They, they showed that, and I went, wow, they made it so easy now. Now it's a feature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, have been, has anyone tried to see if the bot is working? I've just been pretending I'm the bot. Cool. It's not working. Uh, right. IR bot. IR bot. Okay, so I have one more thing to show. Mostly because I just really liked it. Um, this was from CNSC Fox on Reddit this week. Now that we're getting the tonk. Oh. thought it was pretty cool. I love how much bigger the turret is than the body of the tank. This is a this is a reason to have a gun. That's basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I I have heard uh, talkings and whisperings of what is the point of the tank? Well, ground outposts, mm -hmm. ground combat. That you you may think that the um, Ursa, the tumbler. And things like that are going to move too fast for it. But there's people who will find out and will get skilled enough to use the Tonk to hit these things. Mm-hmm. Yep. If, I mean... you've, if you've got... If you need to get to a particular area and it's guarded by anti-aircraft, it's a terrible way to say it when it's spaceships, but you, you get my point, then you land a little bit further away send your ground forces in like your tank that are going to destroy the AA and mm -hmm. you can do, you know, you have your way with this outpost or whatever it absolutely, is. Absolutely, absolutely. There's going to be a lot of missions and, like that. And think about it. If if you've already got people that are so skilled that they're going 300 meters per second and they're, you know, adapting their aim and and leading their shot on, say, an inter or like a, what, what's it called? The... Uh, Origin M50, mm -hmm. one of the smallest oh, God. ships in the game, also going at 300 meters. Trying to second. shoot the M50. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> now, now imagine you're a, you're a stationary armored target, and there's a buggy going by, and you got to shoot the moving buggy. That's going to be ten times easier. The and only difference is going to be bullet drop. I mean, at this point as well, we don't know what kind of uh, shells you're going to get to mm -hmm. use with the Tonk. There may mm -hmm. be something with at least some guidance on there. I would imagine oh. that must come with a sacrifice of payload as well. That but if you're cool. aiming for a bike, you're not going to need, you know, megatons of ordnance to take out a bike. So, mm -hmm. we have some good news here about the uh, roadmap. Um, we are December 4th roadmap here. Um, 312 is 93% done and is already in Evocati. So they actually do have some hope of getting this patch out on time for once. Um, and uh, I think they're trying really hard here to restart their next year on the right footing and not be a month late. Um, and uh, cross fingers. I'm going to really enjoy this patch, I think, because of the refineries. Um, I do a lot of mining in the game and, uh, it will be a nice quality of life improvement for me. Um, I know Shiver loves this roadmap because ordinance is spelled right. Um, <laughs> um, so I mean, it's, I'm sorry I'm just so anal about it. It's just that they've got so many millions. You'd think, let's buy a dictionary. <laughs> I am not complaining. I just thought it was funny. I showed you that, that shot, and you were, and it was there was some interesting stuff in there, and you were like, they spelled ordinance wrong. <laughs> Refund. Unplayable. <laughs> oh, my. Anyway. Um... There's a couple interesting bits in here, but obviously most of this is uh, quality of life stuff. Um, 
planetary planets are going to look a little better. We're going to have some spacescaping um, in-game. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Stanton will look quite a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the gas clouds and the um, nebulas and stuff in the system. So uh, Stanton will look a bit different. Um, AI intercepting torpedoes is going to be interesting. Uh, probably many bugs with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh really also on the mining side really looking forward to the mining ui refactor which they showed off um it's gonna be very nice uh now i know they have they've already shown off the new version of scanning coming up but uh scanning needs an improvement it's uh getting to feel very very old um yeah anything you guys are interested in on here well you're you're you mean to tell me you're getting tired of the golf swing yes mostly the the um visuals of it look like they're very old they looked old when they were first in now they look really really old mm. <clears throat> um go ahead Jay. reputation v1 okay that makes sense that quite nice interested in too. seeing that yeah yeah because mm. i mean that is i'm not sure if that's going to be the first implementation is with that military address that's going to come in and you know if you park on the wrong thing it's going to be like ed 209 and just blow you away or what but it's certainly leading into that and it's more depth for you as a character mm -hmm. also funny you say that lady space patrol because kind of we do but no we're not <laughs> yes but no um we sometimes do, depending on what they are. We have one that we are going to discuss today, um, coming up shortly. <clears throat> um, and of course, the one that we actually saw videos about, we have the, the green multi-tool tractor beam attachment is 87% done. So it is uh, on its way as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up. <clears throat> da -da -da -da. Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining you doing something weird next to Port Olasar or wherever the Idris is at. And the little the the um, like okay. video call video pops up but instead of a person, it's just a picture of the Idris. And it just says you have five seconds to comply. Alright. So we have this thing which showed up on Reddit today. Now why what's that, Nakara? That looks like a new and interesting ship. Supposedly, supposedly, this is the 400i. Um, apparently, some info from the 400i was was in the new patch, and apparently somebody dug up this picture. I don't know if that's true. I have no way to verify it, but it looks like an Origin ship, and it looks interesting. So I thought we would chat about it for a bit. Uh, what do you think, Nitro? Um, I, I like how I'm, I'm a big fan of space boats. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I love the Perseus is it's a big space boat. That's why I love the Idris space boat. Um, and I wouldn't say all of Origin ships scream space boat, but their bigger ships definitely do. And this mm -hmm. one looks like this one looks like a speedboat. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be used for, um, but I, I like it. It's got like the hydrofoil on the front. Um, and yeah, it's just sleek. I like it. I like what Fastcard said. Would that be an astrofoil? Yeah. Yes, Fastcard says that it looks like the 600i and Misk Razor had a baby. Uh, yeah, mm. absolutely. That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> um,. No, I like it. It's pretty cool. It has a lot of... Um, one of the things that actually lends some credence to this for me um, as actually probably being a real thing is uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a lot of detail in the landing gear. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that is almost like a uniquely Star Citizen thing because their ships actually have to land and the mm -hmm. landing gear has to work properly. And you look at the landing gear on the front there and it's pretty complex. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, it probably is a real picture. <laughs> Do we have any idea of the size of the actual 
size of it, the scale of it, inverse. Yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, like retaliator constellation size ship. So could this be Origin's answer to the constellation? Very likely. Yeah, that's my thought. Um, I suspect because of its uh, sorry, uh, I suspect I suspect because of its um, uh, shape that it's probably longer. because uh, a lot of that space there is somewhat. I don't know, wasted, but that whole front section isn't really crew usable. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, I would actually love an in-lore explanation as to why the big, long front. Like, what are they doing with that space? I'm very curious. Well, depending on how big... Because, like, it's kind of... It's kind of a little bit... Um, uh, what's the word? Um, illusionary, because the front window is so... It looks like a cockpit window, mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't look like that cockpit area is much bigger than like a freelancer cockpit. So, but it could be a lot bigger than that. Mm -hmm. So, what if they full on go space yacht, space boat, and between the two pilot seats in the front, there's a door that leads to like a hallway that goes down that long section, and that's where your like mm -hmm. engineering bits are, you know. Let's see if we can see in the window. I mean, it has got one obvious potential weakness. You can see two seats Same. there for sure. Probably three. Can't see down. I'm guessing that it probably has three It'll seats the there. Mm So it's not going to be very combat oriented, I would imagine, if it's got yeah. that kind of a view, you know. They don't really, um, and yeah, no, you can't. You don't have a great visibility. You, I'm guessing, it's not super combat oriented. Obviously, it has a few very obvious guns on the outside. Uh, it's got a rear turret. Um, it's got uh, at least four front facing guns. Uh, to well, actually, that looks like. That's probably a turret. Oh my god, why am I always moving my overlay? Mm -hmm. All right. You know what um, would be cool? This is a dual here, and this is a single. Uh, yeah, there's monitors. some guns on there. <laughs> the, the actual in-ship monitors, if you could use those and say, you know, I, I want my camera to be lower view, so you actually could scan and you've got something there at least. Mm -hmm. That would be really cool. Yeah. Like rather than that window that's in the Anvil Hawk, just have monitors that that show what's below you. Yeah. So any thoughts on what you think this ship will be mostly used for? Basically just a Connie competitor or just same old, same old from Origin? I mean, size craft wise, I'd say Connie competitor, but use case just from design alone i have no idea someone also pointed out very astutely that the uh the little i don't even know what those are called the little things on the wings the vertical bits on the wings look like uh avengers like just stuff oh, bolted yeah. onto the wings <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be cool if they actually were there you go you'd have a little uh snubcraft avengers like sticking off your ship anyway if if anything, I mean, I don't, I don't know if the six hundred I counts as this or not, but other than the low visibility, maybe luxury exploration. Yeah, I could see that. Definitely, because it doesn't seem like something that has a lot of cargo. Um, you know, there's not much, not many guns on it. It's too big to be. A racing ship, but that'd be kind of cool. Maybe it's yeah, that 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 would be pretty cool. If there was like a larger class of racing ship, mm. like race through jump points and stuff. The like star system to star system racing. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that uh, Origin would lean into, but maybe a data runner. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think right. cruising, just space cruising, space yeah. cruising. I like it. Touring. So yeah, that's kind of why I said luxury 
exploration. Yeah. I have another uh I have another origin ship here to show you. Um this one had a bit of a uh an incident. Um but it's a pretty good uh demonstration of the new 100 series. Uh this ship had a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> So the reason I was showing this off, because I, I really love this shot, um, this is a 100 series, and uh, these guys actually managed to land it like this after it got its wings blown off, and survived, and got out. Uh, <laughs> ship's in real rough shape. But I love the damage modeling is, in, in Star Citizen. That That's literally 100 I. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I was thinking uh, that, man, they're starting to put those weird monolith things in video games. <laughs> oh, yeah. Love it. Um, actually, I should mention, because I've been bad about this. Uh, not that I've been bad about this. I've been trying to mention it. Um, so I did mention that the Tonk shot, uh, the little animation was CNSC Fox. Um this shot is from Core Labs on Reddit, and uh, I, I I just love this shot. <laughs> I just can't wait to to do that in a ship and be and actually land mm -hmm. it and be like, look at what it is to fly. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, doesn't Take even it have to the mechanic. Take it to the mechanic. I need it to well, be fixed. Your problem. <laughs> How much is it going to cost to repair? This is more than the ship is worth. Come on. Oh. Sell on the market. It's only got three light years on the clock. It's fine. <laughs> Slightly used. So this next screenshot, which is quite amazing, is from Criticorn on Reddit. Um, yes. Oh. Beautiful shot. If you would have showed me that a year or two ago, I wouldn't have believed <laughs> that it was from Star Citizen. I know. Especially with the, uh, like, the thing that really sells it for me, weirdly enough, is the cacti. Mm-hmm. I'll give you credit there. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, oh, yeah, shenanigans, yeah. I won't, yeah, I won't say anything, but I feel for that. So the next one's from VMXEO on Reddit. Um, he titled this one. This one's artwork, and it was titled uh, Smuggler's Cove. And I just kind of loved it, so I thought I would post it up here. Uh, if my OBS would stop being a giant asshole. Oh, that's cool. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I thought this was awesome and definitely something we might see in game. And uh, it's just, it's so cool. Super old, beat up, like, spaceport with a Drake Buccaneer. Mm -hmm. The door, ba the, the bay doors are gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very mech warrior. It does yeah. look very mech warrior, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought this was pretty brilliant and uh, deserved a, a shout out. The, the little like comms tower thing has mud and grit and dust all over the windows and the other like, clean window is the one they need to see out of <laughs> just like mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> oh man all right thank you richard sky mm. oh thank you very much 18 months wow thank you very much all right, so our next one up here actually came from the legendary Canadian Syrup today. He was, uh, that guy? him and uh, Stormy were looking at uh, show homes in Calgary, and one of them had this in the basement. And I uh, thought that was pretty cool. That is cool. 315P, Drake Herald. 300i, I think. It's the actual title of it is covered up by the uh, light, 
And this one is actually from Kerbal, the bottom right one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then the other feature in that house that I thought on, you guys... Hang on, hang on. Okay. Is this why house prices are skyrocketing? Oh, God. <laughs> yes. This was also in the uh, downstairs, in the show home. Uh, yeah, please. I, I told them they had to buy it. <laughs> This comes with the house, right? <laughs> Damn well right? better. Oh, man. Like, yes, please. Uh... So I'm going to leave us on this for a little while and discuss mm -hmm. about something else that I, you know, is one of my pet topics that I figured I should talk about. Mostly because it needs to be talked about. <laughs> um... Whatever you think of Star Citizen, uh, it's having a pretty good year, and uh, I wanted to give some context for what that, like, how good a year they're actually having. Um, so, I took a look at IE this year, and uh, so, Star Citizen started IAE at $318 million. IAE ran from November 20th to December 2nd. And remember that number, $318 million. It finished on December 2nd with just a hair under $335 million. <laughs> Almost $17 million in two weeks. Um, yeah. Uh, this has been by far the biggest year for crowdfunding for star citizen uh abs absolutely eclipsing prior years um they currently stand at 74.7 million dollars this year um last year which held the title until now uh, i heard a rumor that i just made up that oh, this good. whole coronavirus thing was a conspiracy invented by Chris Roberts just to get people to spend more on spaceships. That's that's actually true. It's it's been verified as fact. I didn't know Chris Roberts was Chinese. That's where all the money's going for virus research. <laughs> they're not building a video game, they're building a biological weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see the red oh, about that. No. Love it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to... I should have prepared this beforehand, but I just figured... I just realized I needed some kind of visual aid for this. So I will do that in just a moment. Um, but uh, 20... Uh, 20... Uh, 2019 was 47 point... Around 47.7 .7 million dollars. Um, today, this year, it looks like it's going to track somewhere in around 80 million. Um, yeah, they're doing okay. Uh, definitely no worries about bankruptcy here. Like we had, uh, concern trolled for many years. <laughs> only, only a few months left. Only. Yep. Calling it now. 90 days, man. Yep. 90 days. Um, all right, so let's actually show off some of this data so I can demonstrate what the hell I'm talking about. All right, so how many numbers are going to be involved? This is the monthly funding visualized, so this only includes uh full months, so uh, months don't get posted on here until they are over. Um, but as you can see, uh yeah. It's kind of a reflection on how long each month felt this year. <laughs> I didn't think November was that long. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, they're doing quite well. Um, this has obviously allowed them to do some other things. They've been hiring a lot of people. I think there's somewhere around 650 now. And they also just, of course... Um, in conjunction with Turbulent, have opened another studio in Montreal, in Canada. Um, so, yeah. What was 
so special about May this year? Was that mm -hmm. the Invictus week? May. That's a good question. Let's go look. But it was crazy, whatever it was. I yeah, think that might have been Invictus. Yeah. Uh, 2020, May... Yeah, that, that was like years ago. that was Invictus launch week. Yeah, it was. Um, and that seemed a long time ago. So Invictus launch week began with uh, about two hundred and eighty-four million dollars and ended with two hundred and ninety-six. I thought you were going to say two hundred and eighty-four days ago. No. <laughs> so that's what it feels like. But yeah, it's. Um, it's been a better year. Obviously, people have been predicting forever that funding would dry up for Star Citizen. That is not happening. Um, Yet. They have... We're all, I think we're all rightly uh, concerned that it could... Just, anyone could just go, nah, at some point. I mean, I did... Well, the last ship I bought was the Arrow. And that was how many years ago was that? <laughs> that was a while ago. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of people. I think, yes, absolutely, individual people do stop spending money on the game. But I think you can just look at the chart and go, okay, well, it's not going to stop. Yeah, fair. Because yeah. even if they go back to, they made, they basically made thirty-five million dollars a year per year, r roughly for like six years in a row. Um, I mean, there's. There's this weird train of thought with some people who say, oh, you know, they're sending out all these ships that are stupidly expensive and that's how they're making their money. It's like, that, that's, that's not how it works. If they wanted to make money, they would sell smaller ships at smaller costs yeah. because that's how you get more people to buy your shit mm -hmm. is you offer more for less. You don't offer fewer things at more money. That doesn't financially work. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to make more money selling, you know, Six hundred thirty dollars ships, and you are selling, you know, however many Perseuses. <laughs> oh, we have a CIG employee here. I love that he's still got the shield. This is weird doing this show without him. And it, yeah, yeah, it is. <sighs> but we're very happy to have Nitro here. Thank you, Nitro. Yeah. Um, should we telegraph changes that are coming up, Shiver? Or should we talk about them later? I think we should wait until Eris is here and then he can fire us for doing it. Oh, okay. That I don't sounds, know what that talking good. about. I know. <laughs> how does it feel to be on the outside, Nitro? No, it's fine. This is how I, I feel whenever you invite me on here. Because you're like, oh, let's talk about Star Citizen. I'm like, yeah, it's a thing I've been beating up on. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, I anyway. mean, Philosophy's right. Microtransactions bring in the, do uh, the money. Uh, mm -hmm. I was watching the base do their um, round table, and Juntal was saying, you know, I wish there were more microtransactions because if there were more things that cost less, I'd have thrown money at the screen. Mm hmm. All right. Give me a tiny Perseus. So I can find <laughs> tiny Perseus. Like one oh. one person ship. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I'll just say, without it giving any details, we do have some changes to show coming up in the new year. Uh, stay tuned. We'll let you know what those are. Um. And as every year, we are probably going to take a week or two off at at Christmas. Just you know for a breather and because there's not going to be any damn content anyway <laughs> like every year <clears throat> um but uh yeah don't worry carlisle gaming we're, we're not going anywhere tina i know i know Who's who it tina? is oh, okay. i know who it is all right all right all right, all right. Tina. he's called carlisle gaming <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> Jake. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, back on track here. Um. So, or is there anything else I wanted to show? I should probably look. 
before I totally give up on show and tell here. I think that was it. Uh, oh, Thank no, you, there, was one, there was another one. And, of course, well, there's one more picture I wanted to show off here. Before we hang, go. hang on, Nakara. You've got to give Mud Trucker the wave. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mud Trucker. Very much. I appreciate it. Um... I can't believe I did that. Uh, this is the only one where I didn't write down who this sh screenshot was from. I'm going to take a look and see if I can find it. Um, but I really like the... First of all, the MSR is an amazing ship. Um, but second of all, the uh, I just love the background detail here on the uh, on the moon. It was it's very nice. Uh, yeah. This is one of my favorite parts of playing the game, too, is if you like, fly over the planets, and I, every time I play the damn game now, I'm flying into a planet, and I'm like, man, this looks good. <laughs> I, I actually, I haven't played for quite a long time, and I have a feeling I'm gonna, like, the, the next time I find it. It'll blow you game, away. Yeah. Because I think last time I played was way before all, like, the planetary like shader updates and whatnot so and there's more coming in 312 which is out in a couple of weeks so it'll, it'll look even better mm -hmm. <clears throat> um yeah i was i just quickly jumped on today and i was uh uh flying my prospector around a bit by the way they fixed the prospector i haven't been able to play 311 that much um prospector handles much better in this patch than it did in 310 uh problem in 310 was um was the prospector's thrusters were weak so it was hard to uh, control the ship under uh, in storms and stuff. Um, actually, it was kind of funny. I just I landed because I had to log off to come and prepare for the show. I landed on uh, Calliope, um, and uh, the freaking storm that was going on where I would land it almost flipped my ship over. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you were able to walk on the surface fine. I didn't get out of my ship. I logged off. Oh. That. I just crawled back to my bed and fell asleep. That was all I did. <laughs> and so now my Pretend poor prospector is happen. just freezing <laughs> into a ice cube on the surface of Calliope. Um, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. <laughs> just go to sleep. Just go to if sleep. I log off, it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, do we have any questions, Shiver? Have you looked? Where yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Excellent. Oh. Well, when a mummy stork and a daddy stork love each other very much, they pick up random children from other people and throw them in a cabbage patch for other random people to find and locate and adopt and call their own spawn. The best part is my Discord keeps like glitching both you and the car out. I got half that. It was very entertaining. <laughs> okay. Wow. Captain Penis has a very long question here. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> All right. That wasn't me. Um, what are the plans? I know. That, that, that's the guy's name. <laughs> what are the plans for spawning on party members? For example, what will happen when three people are playing together and all decide to call it a night and log out from the same ship? If one person then logs back in by themselves and flies the ship elsewhere, where do the boop, 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 where do the other two spawn on the ship at a at the new location? If they log what out if the, in like a bed, I'd assume so. That's what my assumption is as well. Is that they would still be on the ship? Um, what if yeah. the player that logged in by themselves and then moves the ship also jumps on another vehicle and goes elsewhere? Will the other two be able to spawn on that player at the new location, or will they be forced to spawn on the ship they logged out from? I think they'll be forced to spawn where they logged out, unless, and this is where I think it might differ, if you were on your friend's ship and you wanted to log in and play, um, and they haven't logged in since then, I think you might just spawn at your last spawn location before you went on that ship. Um, mm. Does that make sense? Mm 
Um, because I don't think they would lock you out of playing just because your friend hasn't been online since then. <laughs> um, but I also don't think they would just spawn you into your friend's ship and allow you to goof around with their ship. So, yeah. And can you imagine logging into the story season after not playing for a while and your friend? It's it's one of those things where you look and it says like friend last played a hundred and fifty days ago or something like that, and you log in, you're like, I'm still trapped on his ship. <laughs> so. Stop growing potatoes. See, I really like this next one. Fastcart said, did anyone guess that the IE would make $16 million this year? I didn't. That was from Fastcart. Um, I mean, I was kind of guessing it would make about insert number here <laughs> so here's my thought on it i follow this stuff a lot as you guys know i talk about it probably too much um but uh i was wondering because the rest of this year the funding has been extremely high um the whole year really except for october but there was some weirdness that went on there and I, I talked to cig about it and i reported on it previously on this show um sounds like they had some kind of error in their um in their uh the service that actually counts the funding um it was it had some issue and they had fixed it in october and it caused a few glitches um but uh, regardless um I thought it probably would be a big year just because the rest of this year's funding has been super high. I did not expect it to be almost $17 million. Uh, <laughs> it's really, really, really high. Um, as uh, Fascar did, did point out to me as well, we did once again this year break the highest daily total um, with 2.5, 2.5, basically $2.5 million in one day. Um, that was the start of the Perseus concept sale. Uh, popular ship, apparently. Um, but, you know, I've been talking for months now that it was looking like Star Citizen was going to finish the year between 70 and 80, 80 million dollars. That's... Here we are. <laughs> uh, I do expect them to still have some sort of holiday event coming up. Um, they always do. So, hopefully there's something interesting. Maybe they'll make a tonk with Christmas decorations on it. I wonder how many monitors they'll break this year. <laughs> what? I think it was the terrible holiday live stream that no one likes to talk about. Where they did that skit. And they got like some old monitor probably. Oh, yeah. I really, you know, honestly, I've tried. Already I've, broken and I've it, really yeah. tried to erase most of that thing from my memory. I, was, I was the only one that enjoyed that because it had so much Melissa Estrada. <laughs> you did. <laughs> we need um, more Melissa Estrada. We haven't had any Melissa Estrada this year. Maybe what Lady Space fun? Patrol is Melissa Estrada. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't go there. Uh, um, so we kind of talked a little bit about this. You don't even know, you don't even know if Lady Space Patrol's even a female or non-binary. You don't know these things. No, I don't. Uh, Lady they're Space not, they're not Melissa Estrada. Uh, Lady Space Patrol asks, "What are you most excited about in three point one two? We touched on this a little bit, but I'm I'm curious. What are you most excited about? Uh, being Spider-Man. Arachnid dude. Yes, okay. Uh, Shiver. Uh, strangest answer, but whenever it's any patch, I'm always excited for that patch to be done in the game and then for them to move on because I, I like seeing progress. Mm -hmm. the, the progress yeah. that doesn't exist, sorry, that hasn't been made. I like seeing that. Yeah, it's it's like watching... It's like that thing where you, you like watching 
the loading bar, even though it's a painful process, where where you're like, yes, we ma we made a milestone. What's next? How cool that's gonna happen? And you just wait. Um, two things: uh, mining improvements, including refineries, it'll vastly improve the quality of life for lo miners out there. <clears throat> um, and uh, and I'm also something that's not in the roadmap, but is the roadmap. Um, they're gonna try and get the new roadmap out for the end of the month, and uh, I am excited for it. I want to see it. All right. Um, next question. And we could probably use some more questions. We're 28 minutes left, so. Fastcard asks, this is for Nitro, Tom's Diner. Anyway, what predictions do you have for crowdfunding in 2021? Yeah, Nitro. That song's stuck in my head now. Who sent that? Who do I need to be mad Fast at? Fastcard. Fastcard, how dare you? I had a feeling it was fast car, but I missed that part. What was their question again? This is for Nitro, Tom's Diner. Anyway, what predictions do you have for crowdfunding in 2021? Oh, I hope that's that part's not for me, because I have no clue. I'm curious what your prediction <laughs> would be. Does it go up? Does it go down? Does it stay the same? There you go. You you can you guys can fix this in post, right? Insert number here. <laughs> He thinks we have a post. <laughs> I know you don't. That's why it's funny. <laughs> anyway. Um, I mean, we could if if you wanted. I know. I know. I, know I could do I it. Just can't it. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, Shiver, you have any thoughts on crowdfunding next year? It's funny you mention this, Fastcut, because I mentioned this on another show that I was recently guesting on called A Soul Citizens. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's a very good show that's on when Sundays. Is it on? I have to get the time zone. Uh, Sundays at... I can only tell you in Japanese standard time, which no one else cares about but me. <laughs> hey, Fastcar, you're in the chat. When's Soul Citizens? But I oh, would imagine dear. it's not going to hit this level. I, I don't think it's going to hit this level again until... Uh, squadron releases yeah because th this this was remarkable funding level i i would imagine it's either going to be equal to this level for squadron release or exceed it because there are still a lot of people that haven't bought into squadron and you know that that's fair enough why should All they tons. if they just want squadron there is nothing in it for them to buy now it people uh, it would affect, in essence, be a pre-order, and not everyone is into pre-ordering, and that, that's absolutely fine. There's a reason not to pre-order, etc., etc. So there are a lot of people that are still on the fence and just waiting for Squadron to come out, and then reviews to come out, and the plan was always for Squadron releases, and the funding from that helps to complete yeah. uh, Star Citizen. Citizen. So, yeah, I don't... Unless we see Squadron next year, we're not. I don't think it's going to hit these levels. I think this was a remarkable fluke and side effect of everyone being trapped inside and people just going, fuck it, and at least do some mining or something like that while I'm sat here. So I actually went and looked at the numbers because I was curious about that. But I want to, I want to mention something to you. While... I do agree that some of the funding this year is because of COVID. Um, January, 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 which had no sales of any kind, made $5.2 million. February, which had no sales of any kind, made $4.6 million this year. They, they almost made $10 million before the end of February when COVID was still... Uh, Oh, look at how the people in China are all worried about this thing, you know. Um, so I don't know. I I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say that it's probably going to be about the same within 10% of this year's funding. 
Well, one within ten percent, one year, the one way or the other. Uh, funding has been slowly growing year over year for the last four years. So, well, not slowly this year, but it has been growing. So I'm going to say next year will be within 10% of this year. So anywhere from like set or low 70s up to low low or high 80s, somewhere in that range. Anyway, I'm probably going to watch this episode back in a, in a year and be like, what the hell were you talking about? <laughs> I, mean, I hope you're right. Mm. Also, if... One thing you're definitely going to see on the on the crowdfunding chart is when Squadron does release, it's going to do this for like months. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the, the, <laughs> the downside though of CIG getting a decent amount of funding is people are going to equate amount of money to you know uh, development speed, and it's not. It never no ever ever correlates in fact the more money you have the longer the thing takes because you want to make it better look at what happened with cyberpunk and and uh red dead 2 it took forever wait, i mean not wait <laughs> so don't you forget guys that, that's me. just a normal hurdle go on to nitro so so you guys are telling me that i can't get n nine women together to make a baby in one month <laughs> no you works. sure can't Shiver, but I mean, restrain that's the normal yourself. Hurdle in... <laughs> that's the normal hurdle in any development. But <sighs> Star Citizen are using Lumberyard, a variation of CryEngine, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. you have to specifically learn CryEngine to use CryEngine, whereas other engines that are available, you don't specifically have to learn their actual nuances. CryEngine is a Despite what people say, in its own way, it is a wonderful engine. It is a very robust mm -hmm. engine. It's a very pliable engine, but it's a nightmare to learn. It's like um, um, I mean, you've learned to play the guitar, but then someone gives you a sitar, and you're like, I kind of get it, but you need to learn how to use a sitar. Um, what? And I, I, I was slightly... Um... I was glad that there was a good game made with CryEngine recently. Because um, there hadn't been for a while. <laughs> um, Kingdom Come Deliverance oh, was okay. an excellent RPG. Um, and they were able to use CryEngine. They did not have very much money to use. They, I think they got $2, two million in funding, something like that. Um, and that game was extremely successful. So. Thumbs up to uh, Warhorse, by the way, who were then able to parlay that into selling their studio for something like fifty million dollars or something, which was like. Um, next question, also from Fastcart. This is also for Nitro. Woof. Okay, has Shiver ah. recovered from his appearance on Soul Citizens yet? Was it was it a little bit rough or not? Do you not know how to answer your question now? Depressed. <laughs> angry yeah um i really enjoy soul systems it's, it's 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 nice to spread your wings and get different perspectives and so i'm i'm i love soul systems because they're fret they're a new podcast and they've got so much enthusiasm <laughs> Not like us. That we are we've been doing this for years and we're not the most optimistic of people we're not the most jaded of people but it's it's nice to you know appreciate someone else's enthusiasm and when when you're there you can feed off of that and you get back into it and you're like yeah this this is what i was like when i first joined it's like oh this is gonna be great mm -hmm. i can't wait for it and then you come back and you, you back down to earth and you're like oh bollocks still years away then it, it helps also that all of them over there are just super passionate about literally everything Mm -hmm. like, you, yeah, I'm looking at you, Kemi. <laughs> I still want the ultimate combination <laughs> of Kemi and Nakara on the same podcast. What's going to oh, happen, goodness. I think? Uh, I think I'm on next week, if I remember correctly. Check my calendar. It's gonna be That's going to be a long podcast. Yeah. Just the first question is going to be a long podcast. Yep, <laughs> next week, uh, next week, the thirteenth of December, I am on <clears throat> Soul Citizens. 
Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, before we take the next question, uh, before I forget, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, uh, real space stuff because there is some interesting things that are happening right now. Um, so um, I'm actually going to flip back over here briefly to... Um, Da, 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 to our show and tell because I'm going to show while I tell imagine that hey uh, show and tell so uh, something pretty cool happened this morning um, Japan had sent a mission out uh, years ago um, I should probably know when that would be a good thing. Um, <clears throat> they sent a mission in 2016. Uh, sorry, 2016. 2014. Ugh. Um, that uh, visited the asteroid Ryugu and took uh, samples. Um, the mission was called Hayabusa 2. Uh, so it took they samples. Tank there? <laughs> um. They took samples of the asteroid and then they flew back to Earth. And last night they dropped them off in Earth orbit. And uh, this morning they landed in Australia. Um, in uh, and they had they actually were able to show because it was nighttime over Australia. Um, they were actually able to see the capsule with the samples re-entering the atmosphere, which was really cool to watch um, so this is just one of the clips from it and you can see the capsule there moving across the screen as it re-enters the atmosphere little tiny fireball um, but yeah they just tweeted out a little while ago that they were they were able to find the capsule um, and uh, alongside its parachute and uh, so now they have samples of this uh, of the asteroid Ryugu. Also very, very cool. Um, Hayabusa 2 is still working very well, has lots of propellant left. So they have decided to do a slingshot around Earth and head back out there to study more asteroids for the next um, 11 plus years. Uh, so, very cool. Tina's asking if you can give a link for the tank gift, by the way, please. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Anytime. Um, bum, 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 bum. There it is. Bum, 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 bum. So, um, besides that, I also wanted to mention that in the next few days here, it obviously the schedule is very fluid, but in the next few days we have a couple things coming up. Um, tomorrow we should have the first launch of Cargo Dragon 2. So we've all sort of seen the um, the Crew Dragon missions recently. Uh, that's taken up uh, crew from the U.S. on uh, on Falcon Nine. Um, that spaceship also has a cargo version, and uh, it will be launching for the first time um, tomorrow um, from Florida to take supplies up to the space station. It's also carrying a new airlock for the space station in the trunk part of the spacecraft. Um, and, uh, then, um, probably, it's looking like probably Monday, but again, very fluid schedule, so not 100% sure, um, Starship, uh, serial number eight is going to <laughs> attempt to fly to about 40,000 feet, by far its highest flight so far, um, and basically, the upshot of this test is they want to test their aerodynamic surfaces um, and whether or not they can land the thing using the normal landing maneuver they'll have to use when they return from orbit. So, that's going to be pretty cool. Also, SpaceX again, of course. Um, now, now, you said that they're, they, they have the regular version and they have the cargo version now, right? Of, of Dragon, yeah. Of yeah. Dragon, yeah. yeah. Are they offering any CCUs? No, no, they they are not willing to sell Dragon yet to private customers, which is why they're not oh. offering any uh, cross chassis okay. upgrades right now. Well, I mean, I'm just is saying it a war they, bond? <laughs> yeah, if it's all war it, bond, 100. percent You don't get any credit. They make it a little ever. bit smaller and a little bit cheaper, and they're going to make a lot of money. 
<laughs> you're hey, you're absolutely correct. Um, but yeah, so um, pay. You know, we have lots of real space stuff happening right now. A amazing time to be a space fan. Um, check in on our space race uh, channel on our Discord. I will be posting uh, you know links for the to watch the webcast for tomorrow's launch of Cargo Dragon. Also, uh, the webcast for sure of the um, Starship test flight, which is going to be absolutely ridiculous to watch. By the way, there's a probably about a 70 to 90% chance, somewhere in that range, that Starship blows up during that test. So, and I'm not sure a lot of people understand Starship is enormous. It's huge. I actually thought about this the other day. Um, the hospital where I work, Starship, which is the actual ship that will fly through space, is taller than the hospital I work at. Um, <laughs> we, know, we already know that <laughs> Finland, Australia, and space are not real. And the Earth is flat. <laughs> as a Gravity pan- is as a, a lie. Pancake. We're not. <laughs> we're not pulled to the Earth. We're pushed. That's actually why they, you know, that those those notices you get where they're like, "Call before you dig." It's because if you dig too deeply, you'll just cut right through the earth. Mm-hmm. That's why they it's they true. have those notices up. Yeah, it's true. We're, we're pushed onto the earth, just like how air is sucked out of the spaceship if there's a breach. Us. <laughs> <laughs> It, okay. It's crazy. It, mud, mud Trucker is apparently in Australia because it doesn't exist. He's clearly a NASA employee. Yeah, of course. Seriously, that, that that's the conspiracy. Australia doesn't exist. Everyone who says they're in Australia is a NASA employee. All birds are uh, government drones. Question, what burned down yep. in, in uh, at the beginning of this year then? Nothing. It was all a fake rumor. Oh, as okay. opposed to a true rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Anyway, I um, love how that's what you question, but Finland not being real, you know, that's fine. <laughs> totally. We just go right by that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mud Trucker asks, uh, "How does the scrap and the reclaimer get into the hold with a honking big elevator in the way?" I'm gonna let Shiver answer this question. I would imagine that the elevator is actually part, or, you know, going to be part of the process. Maybe it gets brought in, put on the elevator, the elevator lifts it up to the right floor, conveyor belt comes in, or mechanical arm comes in that has to be operated, that kind of thing, and then it just goes through the production line that is the reclaimer. I like that answer. Nitro, do you have any thoughts? Uh, it's pushed. <laughs> okay, I like it. But Trucka asks, probably the best question of the show so far, if Pinocchio says my nose is about to grow, what would happen? Uh, it's something against TOS. <laughs> he makes the same noise that a tree falling in the woods when no one is around makes. Or the same noise when a bear shits. Um... Rudy asks, uh, does Elite Dangerous become more Star Citizen before Star Citizen? No. I mean, he's asking, I believe he's asking this because it, it, they're expanding the interiors and they're doing uh, planetary exploration. Oh, but it's, cool. yeah, it's it's a section of it. It's presumably not going to have anywhere near as much depth as Star Citizen is aiming for but it is going to ha- it is going to be functional but it'll be better than what they have but I, yeah. I i think tacking it onto the end of your development is how you end up with what they're going to end up with i th- trying to mm. make trying to make elite dangerous more like star citizen re- would require you to start making elite dangerous over from the beginning <laughs> I mean, they've, yeah, I mean, they've two, got different aims. They're different yeah, they're, kinds of they're games. extremely different games, really. Both of them are based in space, but um, there are big limitations to trying to make Elite Dangerous as... I'm going to go with uh, Chris Roberts here, as high fidelity as Star Citizen. 
Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, I know that Elite Dangerous has a bit of a sandbox, but it's never going to have the sandbox that Star no. Citizen is aiming to have. It's just not. That's not what it was designed to be. And mm-hmm. I understand their desire to make to flesh it out more, and I, I applaud them for that. That's awesome. Also, Elite Dangerous was free recently on Epic Game Store, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, um, I, I'm going to say. I mean, more like Star Citizen? Yeah, probably. But even a shadow of the depth that Star Citizen has? No. Uh, Elite Dangerous will always have more breadth, though. Uh, It's always going to be a bigger game in terms of, like, sheer number of stars, systems, and and such. Um, Yeah, anyway. Now, the real question is, will you ever be able to be Spider-Man in Elite Dangerous? No, because that's the selling oh, oh, that No, I think I think Star Citizen just won with the with that one little feature, the tractor beam. That was it. It's game over. Um, next question is from Citizen Shenanigans. Uh, do you think we'll get Squadron Forty Two in twenty twenty one? Nitro. In actual series, I know I'm usually the one for Dark Panthers. It's definitely potential yeah i I would imagine it could be in late alpha by the end of 2021 yeah but will we get it true it might be in evocati will they do evocati though were they gonna risk it i don't know that's also yeah they have 600 people in house who to play it now and if they extend that to turbulent they'll be almost 700 but but nikari they can't play and make the game at the same time sure they can when you go home tonight you need to play for an hour <laughs> or take an Damn hour off home. your off the middle of the day to play the damn game well i mean that's that'll be their job game test yep they do it all the time at, right now anyway i mean yeah so, <laughs> so. Yeah. um i mean th- that's the beauty of qa is that uh, Especially the way that CIG have recruited, everyone's got an interest in the game, so they're going to be, you know, this much of the studio, play the game, diagnose bugs, send these bug reports in, the other section of the studio constantly polishing, bug fixing, churning out a new build, and you, they could have this nice little um, circle going around where everyone's at a different stage, you know, they're, this one's trying this build, this one's trying this build, they're debugging a new build, and so on. So in, you know, but it would mean that's what Wilmslow is for, basically. Mm-hmm. You you could have your artists temporarily stop what they're doing to play the game. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, did you give me those uh, those uh, artists or, you know, those concept renderings I asked for? Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to finish the second mission first. I'll, I'll, I'll be done in a minute. Yep. Um... I'm going to say, right now, I'm going to say no for 2021. In terms of it coming out, no. But I think that's what Nitro was getting at anyway. You were saying late alpha by the end of 2021. Well, it's mm-hmm. not out. <laughs> um, no, I don't. Th- we haven't seen any indication anyway that they're that close to being done. Because any game of that scale, because they're going to want it to be basically perfect. They, this is their first shot at releasing a game. And they don't have money pressure, right? They have lots of money. So they're going to want it to be basically perfect. And so I think even if it's in beta by the end of next year, I think it's going to be in beta for like nine months internally, at least. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, Shiver, what do you think? No. Yeah, okay. Simple as that. Just no. I mean, I, I say no nope, in the hopes that, yeah, because I'm always wrong. <laughs> so there's a next, the next question is an interesting one, and I don't really know the answer to it. Um, okay. The answer to the next question is apparently yes. Um, does the ISS have a Christmas tree, and how does Santa get to the ISS? All right. Well, I did a quick look, and there are apparently is a Christmas tree on on the ISS. It's very small and obviously artificial. 
Um, even though, even if it's artificial, man, some artificial trees, those little plastic leaves get everywhere. Yeah, I think they probably spent an enormous amount of time making sure that this one would stay intact. <laughs> um, I'm going to drop that a Christmas tree is vacuum sealed. I'm going to take it, drop a link to it here because there's a particularly nice picture of it. Um, and, How did they uh, get soul on top of it? Because everyone's got to have a star on top of the tree, and if you've got one out there already handy... You just aim the ISS in the right direction, you're good. Someone's permanent <laughs> job is to permanently yeah, just, just keep moving <laughs> the tree. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, and how does Santa get to the ISS? Uh, he gets there in a, uh, in an Aurora LX. That's being pushed. Yeah. Yeah, it has a bunch of mechanical, uh, reindeer shaped, um, uh, Nacelles. Argo vehicles. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Tina asks for Shiver. Uh, if every game you pre order is shit, did you pre order 2077? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so did I. Um, honestly, I've been convinced enough by what I've seen of it and what I've read because I wanted to be sure. Mm -hmm that I'm pretty sure it's going to be good enough for me to be happy with my pre-order. Mm. <clears throat> I haven't looked at any... I, I looked at one of the uh, gameplay previews I did a couple of years ago. That's it. Oh, good. Mm. You're going to be nice and surprised. Um, yeah. I, I look forward to chatting with you about that game. Um, I'll be too busy playing it. You're never going to respond to my messages ever again? Wow. That's rude. Pretty much. Yeah, that's, that's honestly... <laughs> I'll be honest, I think the game's going to be fine. Like, I won't say if it's going to be good or bad. I think it's going to be fine. I'm probably not going to buy it. Because I'm not the kind of person that plays games like that. Yeah, Because I just fine. get too... I get too into it. Really? I, it's like, it's been 12 hours. I haven't eaten or drinking anything. What year is it? I'm surprised that I'm... that stops you from buying the game. <laughs> because, I've yeah, I have two games. no self-control. So I just Cyberpunk. control myself from buying it. And VTM uh, 2. Um, Those are the two, yeah. hey? Yeah, and then all that shit went down with uh, Bloodlines yeah. 2. And I'm just sat here going, it could still be good. I mean, it could still be good. I'm hopeful it's going to be good. They've been churning out some great other Vampire Masquerade stuff, so... And if it's not good, you always have that Battle Royale to fall back on. That's coming Oh, out. fuck. <laughs> you just depressed shimmer um i know Hermes is late for the game for the game asks new roadmap uh how long will we be able to go down the rabbit hole i think he's asking how long the roadmap will extend for um so my understanding is it should the the um there's gonna be two views right there'll be the release view which will be similar to what we have now then there will be the task view which will show all of the things that they are currently working on which is going to be many 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 um i think the task view will go quite a ways into the future um i think that the release view will probably be just a couple maybe two or three quarters long you, you guys have any thoughts on that? Or do you think that's probably correct? Or... I'll be honest, I have no clue. Cool. Shiv? I expect amazing things from this roadmap. I think it's going to be the best thing that CIG have ever churned out. It's going to be created with love, effort, and dedication. That's all I got. <laughs> I, I, like it. It. I know it. I, know, I already know it's going to be a thing of beauty. Um, hashtag Titan Armor win. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so Nitro, where can we find you? We're done the show. It's over. We're done the questions. Where can we find you on the internet? I'm just offended that Tia thinks I didn't shower. <laughs> and Fastcar thinks I smell. <laughs> 
<laughs> what uh, a bunch of jerks on here, uh, eh? Yeah. Uh, you can find me at, uh, at Nitro Type Out on Twitter. Um, I've been on a big character creation stint with uh, DD stuff because a bunch of new stuff just came out. And my it's my current obsession that will end in a week or two. Uh, and then you can also find me over at Table Horrors, which you can find at Table Horrors both on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, and we're in an hour, which I should have tweeted about uh, and didn't. Uh, we uh, we have a game of VTM coming up. I'm intrigued by what Kemi said. For 33,000 seri series users, if your card has issues and you have a PCI slot being taken by another entity, get that other card, whatever it is, off the PCIe bus. The 30 series card is the queen and will not have a mistress. Why do you not have enough PCIe um, lanes? Because they're not using Ryzen. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure Kemi is. <laughs> I know, I'm just... No, he has a 10900K, doesn't he? Which should still have enough PCIe lanes. <clears throat> now I'm intrigued. What the fuck happened there, Kemi? What did you do? What did you do, Kemi? How'd you break it? All right, Shiver, where can we find you on the interwebs? Like like Nitro said, uh, Table of Horrors, about an hour, twitch.tv slash Table of Horrors. We're doing Vampire Masquerade. It's going to be a fun game. Don't miss it. Uh, Keep saying got a special... I'm so worried. We've got a um, special guest again this week. Uh, we might have a special guest next week. In the middle of the week, Wednesday, in your Western time zone, we will be doing either a play or continuing playthrough of Bloodlines, if Tina's around. Uh, if not, we'll be pissing around in Phasmophobia. And who knows, because we spend probably too much time in Phasmophobia, we might just play Phasmophobia anyway and stream it. Excellent. Um, please go watch Soul Citizens tomorrow, uh, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I give Mountain Time because that's my time zone, and I occasionally forget in my head to convert. Um, and uh, always a great show over there, and I will be on that show next week for the 13th of December. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, at Nakara. Uh, you can find me on the Relay Discord at, at Nakara. <laughs> um, you can find me here. And uh, hopefully we will be back with our Tuesday game show this week. Um, Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and you can find us here next Saturday at the same time. And thank you all for coming. We had a great crowd this week. And uh, love you all. Have a good weekend. Have a good night.